I want to share um, something about the solstice. Um, I'm going to share a couple things, but first this one. The longest night gifts us with time to enter the darkness fully. We hold our breaths with nature where life is suspended, waiting in extremis. The stillness behind action gathers as we empty and trust in our renewal. What will you give, lose to the night? Death is a metaphor. Learn to keep dying. The old symbol systems are dissolving at our feet. We need a new language to speak to the crisis of denial and despair. Imagine new models of love, work, health, education, security. Claim your inner resources and fasten your seatbelt. Like Copernicus, we're engaged in a cultural rescue attempt. We're not the center, but one species among millions. Like Cassandra, we shake ourselves, we shake others awake from the slumber overtaking them. We've got to see through the assumptions and fears, awaken to the warning signs of a world slipping away, in fire, in water, in our human collusion, in all directions. Our stories close their circle to enfold us. All the old laws are thrown into the cauldron of solstice as we embrace the ground of what death doesn't touch. <sighs> So welcome yourself to this beautiful energy of renewal. So let's close our eyes or just kind of soften into our gaze and just take a moment to connect to the, the darkness and the light emerging to these powerful planets of energy conjoining in the sky, giving way to a new energy. It takes us way beyond what we feel possible, what we know. It heightens our ability to trust, to hope, to make success out of failed attempts or our, our learnings. And let's just really feel and tap into the way this energy is touching you. So maybe you feel it physically. Maybe you feel it mentally or emotionally. Maybe you don't even know how you feel it, but you just know it's there. And you can just breathe and be curious. So taking just a few deep breaths to just attune our bodies and our energies into whatever is. Allowing yourself to just be with what is. Connecting to your breath. Connecting to the beat of your heart. And imagine those, the beats of our hearts like drum beats on the earth that connect us all to the same earth, the same heartbeat, the same breath. Just kind of feeling into that potential collective energy of all of us with all those aspirations within each one of us for that healing, for leadership, for hope for renewal. So just kind of feeling into how those collective energies, how all of our aspirations gather together and concentrate. And so rub your hands together as we do. Activating the prana, the energy within you, the energy within all of us. And then just laying your hands over your eyes, bowing down. Feeling the softening of your eyes and the awakening of your intuition, right? That sight of direction, of wisdom that maybe doesn't uh, always have a visual effect right away, but guides us nonetheless, that keeps us connected to something deeper than our mind, our ego, that connects us to the truth of who we are as collective, as separate beings. And then allowing your head to bow in towards your heart, make your intention that you wanna send out on this powerful day. And just kind of offering this practice to the light 
to the gift of the darkness, because without the darkness, right, we cannot awaken and appreciate the light. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then lifting your arms up, sending out those intentions as you press your palms out and away. And so keeping your eyes closed, if you can, we're going to come around into all fours. And I'm going to keep inviting you to keep your eyes closed. So as much as you can, to kind of continue to stimulate that connection to your intuition and to that more internal part of yourself. You can begin by undulating your spine and cat-cow or just kind of rolling side to side. Just kind of moving any way you want in all fours. And again, the, the minute you think you want to open your eyes and kind of check out and doing it right, feel into your body and just kind of knowing that it doesn't really matter if it's right or wrong, that you can really just feel into does it feel good in my body. Does it work for right now? So this cat cow can be very unique. It can be very uh, familiar. Just kind of moving your body, breathing. And then coming back to all fours, planting both knees in your left palm, rise up with your right hand for a spinal twist. And then placing your right palm down. And then on the next inhale, your left arm reaches up, spinal twist. And then the left palm down. We'll keep doing that nice and slow. Inhale, right palm up. Nice big twist. Exhale down. Left arm up. Left palm down. One more each side. Right arm up. And then right arm down. Left arm up. And then left arm down. Tuck your toes under downward facing dog. Let your head just drop heavy. You can bend the knees a little bit more if you'd like to accentuate that low back. Feeling the stretch of your spine, the dropping down of your head. And then nice and slowly walk your hands back towards your feet so that you can allow your heels to sink down. So you might have to come you might have your hands like halfway or it might be very close. Feel free to bend the knees and just open up through the hamstrings. You can bend and straighten your legs a few times or lift and lower your heels. You might sway a little bit, just starting to say hello to those hamstrings. And then walking your hands a little closer, bend the knees and roll up nice and slowly. Keep your eyes closed if you can. I tell the arms come up. Rub your hands together. And then sit back into a squat and let your heel of your hands cover your eyes and let your elbows sit on top of your thighs. So you're in a squat pose and you're holding your head up with your hands, but you have blocked your eyes. So there's that inner vision. And then just sit low and breathe. Guha hidden pose. Feeling the legs start to strengthen, heat building. And then on the exhale, pour forward, keeping your eyes closed. Walk yourself out to plank. And again, trying to trust your uh, intuition as you come out here, coming into plank pose. And on the exhale, drop your knees down, child's pose. So you might tuck the toes this time, or you can untuck them, but kind of generously press the hands down and forward to really stretch out through the back. And coming into all fours again, downward facing dog. Walk your hands back nice and slowly so that again, you can allow your hamstrings to open to whatever degree feels good. Bending those knees, roll up nice and slowly. Keep your eyes closed, arms reach up. Rub your hands together at the top. And then as you sit low into a squat, cover your eyes with the heel of your hands and sit low. Nice deep breaths. Learning to see in the darkness. Learning to feel our way through. Showing up for what is. And then releasing the hands down. Walk nice and slowly out to plank. Doesn't matter if the hands are exactly even, just trust where they land. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And then knees down, child's pose. Coming into all fours, add back in that twist. Right arm lifts, twist. 
Thread it through on the exhale. Rest on that right cheek and that right shoulder. Stretch as you press your left palm down. And then uh, press into the left palm, lift your right arm back up to the sky. Set it down, exhale. Left arm lifts, stretch it up. Thread it through on your exhale, resting on the left side of your face, your cheek and the left shoulder. Press into right palm and feel that twist. And then the left palm will lift back up to the sky. Exhale it back down, downward facing dog. Take your right hand to the outside of your left thigh, your ankle, give a little twist here. Drop your head, you can bend your right elbow. Switch it out, right hand down, left hand to the outer leg or waist. You can bend the left elbow and then both hands down, walk the hands back towards the feet, back to the mat. Sway or stillness. Then the knees roll up nice and slow. Last time, rub the hands together and then cover the heel of the hands as you sit back into Duha. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Then release the hands down, walk out to plank, and then walk your feet to your hands at the top of the mat, nice and slow. Come to a halfway lift and then a forward fold, and then roll up to standing nice and slow. Keeping your eyes closed, hands meet at the heart. Deep breath in and out. As you're ready, the arms are gonna reach up. You're gonna exhale forward fold. And again, you can keep your eyes closed as much or as little as you can. Halfway lift, inhale. And then step your right leg back, Drop your right knee down and walk your left foot over to the left a little bit more. So both hands are inside your left foot. Then as you let your hips come forward, let your uh, chest lift up. So you can feel a stretch through your left groins and your right frontal hip. So if your left heel is not down, you can walk it further forward. Take a nice deep breath. And you're gonna take your left hand to the outside or the front of your left shin. So I'm kind of stepping my left hand around and across the shin so it's on the outside of the left foot. Now I'm gonna pull that heel of the hands back, the chest will lengthen forward, then I'm gonna bow. So if I have my left forearm and upper arm in front of my shin, I can kind of press into my shin and move my left hip back. Then I'll just breathe, let my head drop, get heavy. Kind of feel that core energy pulling away from the hips and curling down, feeling the hips melt. And take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and then tuck your right toes under, lift your right thigh, take a quarter turn to your right so that you're in a wide angle forward fold. And just kind of intuitively adjust if you feel like your hips are not level. Take a long spine and inhale, plant your left hand in the center of your mat and lift your right arm up for a twist and then bend your right knee so that you get a little bit of left inner thigh stretch here. So my right knee is bent, my right palm is up, and my left hand's on a block for the floor, left leg straight. And I'm feeling a stretch from my left inner thigh all the way down to my left inner foot as my pelvis slightly turns towards the right. So twisting, just kind of letting your gaze soften and don't worry if your legs are even or perfect, just kind of feeling your way through. Then the right hand comes down, I'm gonna to turn towards that right foot and step into a standing split. So you can have both hands down for more comfort and more grounding sensation, or maybe you take one hand to the small of your back, maybe you have two, or maybe it's behind the calf, but try to trust your balance with eyes closed. Try with eyes closed. Take another deep breath or two, and then both hands back down to the floor on your second exhale, and then lower that left leg down so that you're in a high lunge. So take your time, slowly coming up to stand. And the arms will meet above your head, palms together. Then we're gonna inwardly rotate the hands as they travel back behind you to either reverse prayer or you'll grab onto your elbows. And we'll just keep vacillating the arms. You might have a soft gaze if closing your eyes doesn't work. Hands Meet at the top of the head and then exhale, internally rotate the arms, either grab opposite elbows or reverse prayer. Two more. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, 
and then exhale, holding here with internally rotated arms and a proud chest, just breathing in, breathing out, letting the shoulders soften. Then you're gonna take a quarter turn to your left and we're gonna open into a horse pose. So knees out and we're gonna sink down. The arms will rise up. And when you're ready, you're gonna clasp the hands to either form like a Vira Mudra or your palms meet together, and it's a, a chop. So we're gonna breathe in, lengthen the spine, and then a, and you can go fast or slow. And I want you to imagine you're kind of chopping down through the darkness or through the veil that separates you from the truth, from the light. So it can be slow, or it can be a, right? You pick the pace but try to lengthen on your in inhale and exhale, go a little deeper. <sighs> so if you don't wanna have Vira Mudra, you can just kind of rise your arms up and then drop them down. <sighs> just imagine kind of ridding yourself of anything old and heavy of the past that you're ready to let go. <sighs> Four more. <sighs> Really blow air out. Two more. And then go real low. And then fold forward. So your hands can come down to the floor or you can grab both of your ankles and use your elbows once again to widen your thighs, letting your head bow. So the legs will start to turn on a little bit more. Feel that. Let your head drop. Letting the head feel heavy, right? Head below the heart. Breathe in, breathe out. Let the hands come back down and just move the knees, just bend and straighten, kind of going side to side. And then just carry enough momentum that you can to return to the right side of the mat. Your right knee will be forward and you'll step back to downward facing dog. You're gonna breathe in, breathe out. So choice to go plank, chaturanga to a back bend, or you can go plank, knees down, you can hold child's pose if you like. So you choose, you can go through your vinyasa. We're gonna meet in downward facing dog in the next couple of breaths, so take your time. Those of you in child's pose or those of you going through vinyasa, whatever feels good. And then nice and slowly walk your feet to your hands top of the mat, taking your time. If you can, keep your eyes closed. And then sweep your arms all the way up to touch above your head, inhale. And then exhale, hands to the heart. Breathe in. Breathe out. Arms sweep up. Exhale, forward fold. Long spine, inhale. On the exhale, step your left leg back, knee down, and then step your right leg over to the right, maybe a couple footprints, so that both hands fit inside your right thigh. And then you can use blocks as well. Let your chest rise as the hips release down and forward. If your right heel is not flat on the mat, you can walk it forward a bit. And you can you just breathe, kind of feel this out, stretching through the inner thigh and the frontal hip. And then I'm gonna face you just to show you this in case uh, you were a little confused. Remember, it's, it's okay if you didn't do it right. Right hand across the shin and forward. So then I have my right upper arm bill pressing on my right shin as I lift up and forward. Then I exhale and I bow down. So I'm just knocking the right shin back just a touch so that I can feel myself traction long. Then I'm heavy through the head but my arms are active as I push down and forward. Breathing in, breathing out, staying present and aware. As you're ready, you're gonna to start to come back up. You're gonna to turn to find a wide leg forward fold. Take a deep breath and halfway lift and then your right hand plants, your left arm lifts and you bend the left knee. So it's a groin stretch. So I'm turning in the direction of my bent knee and I'm feeling a stretch from my right inner thigh, the right inner foot. Your head can drop or turn and face down. 
both hands come to the floor. You'll take a quarter turn to your left. Take your time and try and do this with your eyes closed. Lift your right leg, stand in splits. Now you can keep both hands down or maybe one hand comes behind the calf or to the small of the back, maybe two. And maybe you, you're wobbling right in the balance because your eyes are closed. Maybe you take a softer gaze or you're okay with the wobbling. Okay, both hands come down and transition to a high lunge. Take your time, find your solid footing, and then slowly come up. Arms will rise up. And then we'll internally rotate our hands to either find reverse prayer or grab opposite elbows. And then three more times, inhale, rise up. Exhale, inwardly rotate the arms. So I want you to really feel that rotation to prepare for some shapes that are coming. Inhale, exhale. One more time, and then we hold that internal rotation. It's okay if you do this and just the fingertips touch and then heel the hands don't touch. Totally fine for reverse prayer. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Quarter turn to your right for a horse pose. Release your arms up. And you're gonna fold your fingers back so that you have to look for this one so that the fingers are touching kind of the base knuckles, the thumbs face one another. Your arms are about like, you know, 60% all the way up, right? Shoulders down. This, this energy practice is called ego eradicator. <laughs> We're gonna do breath of fire as we keep the arms up. And just kind of imagining that smaller mind, that smaller version of ourself in which we're limited that we dissolve that and we get a little bit closer to that more higher mind, that part of us that understands our vastness, our potential, our connection to all it is. So take a deep breath in. When you're ready, go. So we're just pumping the belly and holding the arms up. You'll start to feel the energy start to rise and intensify maybe in your legs or arms, keep going. Keep your eyes closed. Maybe you sink a little deeper in your squat. Keep going 10 more seconds. Inhale up, let the thumbs touch above your head, stretch long. Exhale, palms reach out and away as you fold forward, grabbing onto your ankles if that's possible, pressing your elbow and lower arm bone into your shin bone, or just grabbing the floor and folding in your horse. Deep breath in, deep breath out, bowing, letting all that prana that you generated go towards the head. Higher energy centers. And then when you're ready, take a quarter turn to your left. Step into plank, and you can decide if you want to go plank, chaturanga, cobra, sphinx, any kind of belly down back bend, or you can go right to child's pose if you prefer. Again, try and do this with your eyes closed so you get more of the feeling of your body awareness and that intuitive guidance. Breath in and breath out. Walk your feet to your hands, top of the mat. We'll add on a little bit on this one. So roll up nice and slowly, arms stretch up. And then right back down through the center seam of your body. Let that thumb trace that center seam of your body and see your center line as you do this. Halfway lift. And then on the exhale, right leg back and you're back in that wider lunge. So knee down, left leg goes over to the left. So just a breath to lift your chest and rise through the heart and head. And on the exhale, that left hand travels in front of your shin and wide outside your foot, and then you fold. Option one, you stay here. Option two, you can turn your right palm to face up for a half bind. 
You can turn your left palm to face up and you can fully bind. So I can bind across my front shin, both palms facing up. I could use a strap or a towel, or I could just do half of it. And I can let my hips continue moving forward as I solidify the strength of my legs. You have five breaths. Remember, nothing wrong with just having the hands wide and releasing the hips. Three, two, slowly unbind if you're bound. Tuck those right toes in our quarter, turn to your right, and we're in a wide angle forward fold. Come to halfway lift, left hand down, right knee bends as we turn and twist. So you can keep the right arm up, or you can inwardly rotate it here and lay the uh, back of your hand on the small of your back. And you might notice that if you do that, that the pelvis is slightly angled, that's okay. You can play with uh, flattening the pelvis a bit and kind of noticing what the twist feels like differently. So you can play around with that, with your sensory awareness. As you're ready, release the right arm down, climb to the right, come into a standing splits again. Maybe you're playing, playing with your balance. Maybe it's hand to heart this time instead of hand at the small of the back. And maybe you're trying to balance here with hand at the heart. Then as you're ready, land those left finger, those left toes down. This time land it in a warrior two and windmill the hands up and around for warrior two. So it's heel to arch. So if you have to open your eyes briefly just to find your place, that's totally fine. Arms are gonna stretch out. Then we're gonna to come towards side angle, right hand on your thigh or a block, left arm up to start. Inner rotate the left hand and come to a, a, a bind here, a half bind. Head releases or looks down. So this is option one. You bring the pubic bone and the tailbone towards one another. Low back is long. I'm turning at the waist and I'm lengthening to my right side seam so I can stay here. If I wanna fully bind, I can reach my right arm underneath the body. If I want a little bit more, maybe I use a block. So you have five more breaths, again, to kind of feel yourself. Maybe a little bit closed in, but then in finding that light, like finding that freedom, that when you bind the arms, there's actually more freedom to lengthen through the spine and turn sometimes. So trying to capture that. Then as you're ready, you're gonna slowly come back up nice and slow, warrior two. Then we're gonna windmill the hands down to the floor into a low lunge. That right arm goes to the side, and then it goes back to that half bind and we twist with a half bind. So you're reaching your right fingertips towards your outer left hip. Then I just kind of turn and twist. So if you wanted to add on and do a full bind, if you're really into the binds, I could reach around and grab my fingertips here, maybe. Oh, that's a tight one for me. Or I can just stay in the low lunge. Okay, friends, deep breath in and out. And then bring both hands down to the floor. Then you're gonna bend the left knee, bend the right knee. And then just sit on back for a moment. Because we're gonna, we're gonna go into a different shape. We're gonna go into Marichyasana. So we're gonna sit into a seated pose with the right leg straight and the left knee bent. So this is Marichyasana, it's a sage, and he's uh, is known as the ray of light. So uh, your left leg comes in as close as you can, and I recommend sitting on a blanket or something if your pelvis is tucking under. So you can just hug that left knee and that right arm can rise up. And maybe for you today, you just reach towards your big toe or your foot, and that's enough. That can be your pose today and fold. Otherwise, if you're feeling strong, right arm down, left arm comes up, and it reaches across the shin, okay? And then I reach the right arm back behind me, and I'm folding over my straight leg in a bind. So I'll show you from behind. So you might open your eyes just for a moment just to see the shape. I'm vigorously pressing down with my left foot to get that lift to fold. This is similar to the low lunge shape we did, just a little bit different. Let your head bow. 
Let your back of your neck get long. And then you're going to take a deep breath and you're going to sit up nice and tall. I'm going to come back around so you can see. We're going to do Marichi Asana three. So you're going to hug again the left uh, leg in, the right arm comes up, and I twist. You can either grab onto the outside of your left thigh or you can twist on top. Twist to the left. Can I feel your belly and thigh get closer as you sit up nice and tall? Okay, take another deep breath in and out. Unravel, swing your legs to the side. And we're gonna come to downward facing dog. So this is where your option is to, if you would like, go through a vinyasa or come to plank and then knees down chaturanga or knees down child's pose. Your choice. We'll meet in down dog. Breath in, breath out. Slowly walk when you're ready, your feet to your hands, top of the mat. As you're ready, halfway lift, stretch your spine long, fold on the exhale, arms sweep all the way up. Then again, tracing the thumb line from the crown of your head through the center seam of your body, all the way down to the floor. Once again, halfway lift, fold, and then the left leg steps back and knee down, and then I widen my right foot. So just a breath here to lift the chest. Then again, option to either take your right hand across your shin to lengthen, kind of knocking that right shin back to fold. So I can stay here, or I could half bind this, the left arm up, internally rotating, and I just could rest it at the low back. I could even do my right hand if I prefer. Maybe I try both, or maybe I just stay in the fold. Right, so part of what we're working on this month is showing up, right, for how our bodies are in the moment, for what's present, and then stepping up when it's appropriate. So if it's appropriate for you to try something new, like binding or trying to balance with eyes closed, then you do what you can, right? Just trying new things helps us shake it up, be present for new sensations, new things that are, could be possible. Okay, so as you're ready, you're going to slowly unravel, take a quarter turn to your left, and you're going to wide angle forward. You're going to plant the right arm, you're going to lift the left arm, and then you'll bend the right knee as you transition towards the left. Kind of, you'll stay in your wide angle twist. Remember, you could bind here, so the left hand can come to the small of the back. I'm just binding, twisting. Maybe the head goes. You might play around with flattening the lumbar and tilting it. So you might be kind of moving the pelvis through space to find a sweet spot. Okay, releasing that left arm down to the floor. Take a quarter turn to your left. I'm facing that left foot standing splits. You're challenging your balance by either bringing one hand up or the second arm up, and maybe your hands are at the heart or at the small of your back. Maybe they're behind your calf. It doesn't really matter what you do, just trying something different. You can use a soft gaze if you need to. It's very challenging to balance with your eyes closed. And then release the hands down as warrior two. So take your time, set it up. Ooh, a little hip cramp there. Arms out to the side. Okay, so set up your strong legs and then it's side angle, hand to the thigh or a block, right arm up. Inwardly rotate, take the back of the hand to the small of the back and bring your tailbone forward. Lengthen through your side body and twist your spine. Because that might good be good or you might want to full bind or you might want to drop the left hand down towards your ankle or a block. So again, you're just stepping it up to whatever feels appropriate. And you can always ease off if it's not feeling good. Neck release or looking down can help connect more to your body's kind of intuitive wisdom, less kind of head driven, kind of more of that surrendering. Okay, take a deep breath and then slowly come up. 
And then we're gonna cartwheel down into a low lunge, facing the left foot. And then once again, the left hand goes out to the side of the body. Then I do that half bind again and turn and twist to the left. Maybe it's a full bind if I'm feeling that. Otherwise I can just enjoy the low lunge twist again with the half bind. Head can go down or look down. Releasing the left arm up and then down to the floor. Set your right knee down, set your left knee down, and now come to a seat. We'll do the second side of Marichi Asana. So the left leg now is your, is your uh, straight leg, right knee in. So you do have to move the knee wide to get through, but then you want to pull it back in, right? So you're not having to bind across a really uh, wide, wide angle. So either hugging that right knee in, sitting up tall, and just reaching your hand to a block or a strap, excuse me, works. So just kind of showing you that. I could be here. And that's totally fine. I can also take my left hand as my second spine, right arm up, internally rotate it and grab across my shin. Now, if I have a strap, I can grab it with one hand and then grab it with the second hand. So it's a forward fold. I hug inner thighs together and I push down the right heel to fold up and over. Give me a nice little low back stretch. Surrender your head, let the heart back of the heart breathe. Take another deep breath in and out. Slowly coming up and now we twist. You can either hug the right knee in with your left elbow crook and turn. Or if you'd like to take the arm on the outside of the thigh, you can twist here. Once again, you can sit on blocks or even use a block underneath your right hand. Okay, one more breath. See if you can sit up nice and tall to revolve and twist. And release it out. Okay, we'll let those both legs come out and then sweep them back. Come into downward facing dog. And this is where you get to choose if you'd like a vinyasa, plank, chaturanga, upper dog, or cobra. Or if you just want to go plank to child's pose. You choose whatever's feeling good this evening. Breathing in and breathing out. And then as we're ready, we're going to come to all fours again and then downward facing dog. You just take five deep breaths here. Stretching out through the spine. And then knees down and you'll come to a child's pose and before you do so i'm just going to explain something so we're going to again ignite more of the intuition from our body with some visualization so as i say colors and areas you're just going to imagine it there whether you see it there or not doesn't matter we're just trying to again stimulate the right side which is our more intuitive creative um, different part of our brain and the linear logical okay so child's pose you can have your knees wide or knees narrow if Having your head hang is uncomfortable, put a block there. And it's especially nice if you can rest kind of the space between your eyes there. So either hands forward or you can have your hands at the small of the back or down towards your ankles. I'll let you pick a comfortable position. So we're gonna be breathing and really holding the breath, right? So if you need to at any point let go of the breath, you can't hold it anymore, it's totally okay, you guys, okay? So take a giant breath in from the base of your spine to the crown of your head. Hold at the top and see red at the base of your spine, orange at your sacrum, yellow at your navel, green at your heart, blue at your throat, indigo at your third eye, white at the crown. And as you exhale, let all the colors fade into white as you travel the energy down on your spine. And you'll breathe in again from the base of your spine to the crown of the head. See red, in, red at your base, orange navel, just travel up, yellow, uh, yellow navel, green heart, blue throat, purple between your eyes, white at the crown, 
and let the colors dissolve and fade into white as you exhale all the way down. You have two more just like this. Red at your base as you, breathe, as you hold the breath. Orange at navel. I'm sorry, orange at sacrum, yellow at navel, green at heart, blue at throat, purple between your eyes, white at the crown, exhale all the way down your spine. See those colors just fading and blending. Deep breath in from the base of your spine to the crown of your head, hold at the top, red at the base, orange at the pelvis, yellow at the navel, green at the heart, blue at the throat, indigo between the eyes, white at the crown. See that white concentrating, swirling, maybe turning into a white brilliant light, and then exhale it all the way down your spine. Releasing. Just take a moment to just kind of feel and sense. Hmm. And as you're ready, you're gonna slowly come up to a seat. So you can come to Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together, knees wide. If you like to sit on a block, feel free to do that. You can even put your feet on a block and have your hands back so you have a long spine and you can just relax your thighs. So option for this, if you're trying to get a little deeper fold or a deeper hip opener today, you can put the block between your feet even. We're just gonna sit up nice and tall for a moment and close our eyes. And just kind of as you close your eyes, concentrating your energy at the center of your brain and just breathing there. Just kind of breathing through the center of your brain as you're opening through the hips, sitting up nice and tall. Take another breath in and another breath out. And then you can remove the block and then bring your legs a little closer and just kind of lift and lower your knees like you're fluttering your butterfly. Just keep breathing in and out. If you need to sit on a blanket, you can do that. And then slowly lift your knees up and extend your legs forward. Sit up nice and tall in Dhanbhasana. So just sitting up tall, feeling that lift in the base of your spine all the way up to the crown of your head. So kind of traveling through that center line, just like we were doing in our imagery from the base of the spine to the pelvis, to the navel, to the heart, to the throat, to the space between your eyes, to the head. And then cross your right ankle over your left and pull the legs in so you're sitting cross-legged. So this next one is a prana building from the earth element, right? So harvesting that earth element of structure and form and then allowing that to energize us as we bring the energy up for the final time with our exercises. So we're gonna be pumping like you're, like you're uh, like bouncing a basketball. So you can do this with long deep breaths or you can do breath of fire. And I want you to imagine as you're doing this that you're intensifying this earth energy so that you can use it as a sense of grounded and support to move us forward with our commitment and resolve. So ready? We got one minute, go. Imagine this energy just fortifying, fortifying your energy field, giving you strength and determination and confidence that allows you to try new things, to be bright, to feel yourself opening to life in whole new ways. <laughs> Try 
try to feel the energy below your palms, kind of that energy being built all around your body like a force field. 10 more seconds. And take a deep sip into your breath, hold. Feel red at your sacrum or red at the base, orange at your pelvis, yellow at your navel, green at your heart, blue at your throat, purple between your eyes, white at the top. And then exhale it all the way out. So you're gonna keep that, uh, keep those legs out in front of you just like you did before. Sit up nice and tall. Kind of stretching your spine long. And then bend your right knee and then bend your left knee. So you have two 90 degree angles. Then allow yourself to come forward towards your right shin for a hip stretch. You can make a double fist. You could stretch one or either arm long. And just take a moment to feel and sense those hips releasing whatever way you get a stretch. Nice long deep breaths. And then one more deep breath. And then press into your hands and then slowly come up and you're just gonna flip flop so that now the opposite knee is in front. You have two 90 degree knees. I'm on one hip. So I'm, I have my left leg in front, so I'm on my left hip. And then again, folding forward and you can use a block for the third eye. Just allow yourself to surrender. If you need to have your hands straight, you can certainly do that. Long, deep breaths. Just relaxing your body, allowing yourself to connect into that stillness. And then one more cycle. Slowly make your way up, take your time. You'll straighten both legs forward in front of you. Sit nice and tall for a moment. And then cross your left ankle over your right, bend your knees and come to cross-legged. So the last of these energetic practices to again, increase your vitality and energy is the one we did on Thursday. So the palms are up, you're gonna reach out and you're gonna strike your ribs as you make a fist, okay? So it's inhale, exhale. We got one minute, let's go. Up as tall as you can and focus your energy right at the center of your brain from your heart to the center of your brain feel that lift there. Lift your arms up, hold. <coughs> Excuse me. Exhale, turn your palms to fade out, face out as you release. And then take your right hand, fold your index and middle finger back to touch the base of your thumbs so that you have your thumb and your ring finger and your pinky and plug your right side, breathe in through your left. Plug your left, breathe out through your right. 
Breathe in through your right. Out through your left. In through your left. Out through your right. In through your right. Out through your left. In through your left. Out through your right. In through your right. Out through your left. In through your left. Out through your right. In through your right. Exhale through your left. Release both palms down and up and sit nice and tall. Just kind of feel the energy within yourself. Feel what's shifted and changed, where you feel warmth. And then we're going to rub the hands together. Building again, once again, that Shakti, Prana energy. And then you're going to take your right hand to your heart. You'll turn and rotate the left hand so that the top of the hand is at the back of the heart. And you're going to take five deep breaths into the heart. And then one more deep breath in. And then reach the arms up, inhale. Down to your heart, exhale. Releasing the palms to face up. We'll do a round of that Brahmari kind of a humming bee buzzing. And so I want you to, again, we're trying to lift the energy up towards the higher centers of the brain. So you're gonna hum as you take the, in an inhale at whatever vibration kind of feels like it's kind of reformulating, re-synergizing your brain. So it sounds kind of like this. Mm -hmm. I can find whatever tone like feels good. Okay, so we're gonna do this just for a moment or two. So maybe like five rounds here. So when you're ready, breathe in. Mm -hmm. Keep going, just finding the right tone. And imagine this is like a tuning fork, like kind of reformulating, resetting your brain to match the higher frequencies available for us to step into. Like the vibration of your soul, the vibration of light, the vibration of creativity. A perfect union with your intuition. Mm -hmm. We'll take one more round. Mm -hmm. Just rest for a moment in that quietness and feel into your body. And then when you're ready, lie onto your back. Feel free if there's any final shapes that you need. Otherwise, just lying on your back and just taking in this practice and the energy that you've cultivated. And as you're lying on your back, you just kind of surrender, just like trusting all of this energy as if it's just like attuning you through your receptivity, through your willingness to receive and to take it in. Now as you just kind of breathe and take in this energy, I want to read to you one of my favorite poems by David White, Sweet Darkness. 
When your eyes are tired, the world is tired also. When your vision has gone, no part of the world can find you. Time to go into the dark where the night has eyes to recognize its own. There you can be sure you are not beyond love. The dark will be your womb tonight. The night will give you a horizon further than you can see. You must learn one thing. The world was made to be free in. Give up all other worlds except the one to which you belong. Sometimes it takes darkness and the sweet confinement of your aloneness to learn anything or anyone that does not bring you alive is too small for you. So as we kind of rest in this silence and this potentiality, letting yourself get larger, more expansive, more hopeful, of what is to come, of our part in the whole when we just show up and step up, be willing to shake it up and open up. We all, may we all have this courage to live out the most authentic version of ourself. And we have the courage to be so honest and truthful with ourselves in each moment. May we remember to dream again, to be captivated, stirred by our aspirations for healing, for hope, for transformation and renewal. So wishing all of you so much joy in this new time, so much illumination, so much magic that can be found as we move through the dark. So feel free just to keep resting and just taking in the silence and stillness of this time of resting, of listening, right? So I'm just gonna touch my hands to my heart and bow towards each of you and the courage that it is for all of us to show up together and I acknowledge your courage and dedication to be part of our community and to practice. So thank you so much, each of you for being a part of this community and for being yourself because the world needs you just as you are. So thank you for being you. Love to each of you. Happy solstice. Namaste. Mm. We'll send lots of love.